says mine. In May 2014, two legendary anthropologists, upper class Cherk and Frank Casso, embarked to a journey paralleled by no other. Their mission to analyze and deconstruct Benelux cultures and German and France. Here we can follow how the hero anthropologist prepares himself to encounter with the natives in their natural habitat by dissecting his belongings into non threatening package. And so begins our glorious trip to Benelux with this luxurious car that's fabulous and so much expensive and so good. That's not our car. What? Scheisse. What's our car then? That's our car. Traffic on Netherland roads illustrated the primitive nature of drivers driving the jerk frustrated. Language censored by the common sense regulations. We approach to the Russian Ardem. We can clearly see the great path that the German, noble German tanks rushed through the islands and crushed all the villages on their way. The Battle of the Bulge happens and here and beyond to the west what a nice road to go with the German Panzer Division go what would you say as all that sounds nice really nice when when am I going to have my beer next time Soon, very soon, very soon, we are on the beer region as the noble Belgians or they are beer people. Yes, they like to brew some beer. Oh, look, there's some biker coming. Some peasants, there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and a car. He doesn't, can't afford the car, so <laughs> he have to go bicycle. If you can't buy a car, you should at least rent one yeah, every once in a while. Because just driving with the bike, that's like the worst. And so we should see La Rosa and appear. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Nice. Okay, there it is already. On our right side. And I think we should see it pretty soon. Oh, let it be. Let it be. Yeah. Okay, here it is. This doesn't look too demolished to me. <laughs> yeah, not anymore. Okay, there's a nice bridge and some kind of little dam and even traffic lights. Say, asshole, what do you like? Nice, nice. Where's my beer? It's in the restaurant, just around the corner. And the food is selected solely on the, based on the view outside. But it looks promising. Can I eat already? Absolutely not. Where's your manners? Where's my beer? <laughs> In this picture we see Slavic Slav with the American tank. In past 
Don Beljong, our hero anthropologist, encountered primitive culture, peasants, and much of military equipment left behind by the U.S. troops. The condition of the village was somewhat decent, but altogether the marks of the war were still visible. So frustrated was the drunk asshole that he punched a hole into the American tank. As every history loving people will do, sell the memorabilia with overpriced, ne overpriced memorabilia here. Terbia. Refreshed by peasant pastries, the anthropologist traveled on. This is Luxembourg. The Grand Duchy of Luxembourg. But for some reason it smells like peasants. So we go inside to get some snacks. This is not for peasants. This is for the elite. At its best, I would say we left behind the peasant villages, the nerds and other Polygons, and now we enjoy the nice views, nice nature. Yes, it's very beautiful, and it's even nicer to have this kind of straight road so you don't have to spend your time guessing uh, which of the signposts that guide you to the wrong places are really wrong or are they right. I would say that the natives have done this part quite well, but the other part they have still some places that they need to develop their culture. Yes, definitely. Uh, the one point that we missed in this video was that there was this dwarf or kind of village, almost a suburban like place, but in between of the uh, suburban houses there were cows yes. feeding and there was also a dog that was hunting uh, moles or mice or something like that. And this obviously tells us about the primitive nature of Luxembourgians. Yes. As you can see, look at this. Cars, buses, and this, some kind of river flowing here. Why? <laughs> okay, look at that. Now we are arriving at the Luxembourgian border town. We just had to stop for one he heroic uh, lorry driver to get past us. This city is, or this town is probably called uh, uh, maybe Beagelbach or Dillinger or something like that. And uh, well, you cannot see it right now, but right behind those houses and fences, there is a river, uh, and the river's name is Sauer. And uh, behind the river, there is a Germany. So this is very much a cross-cultural and transborder borderland studies and borderline study of the human nature and natives of the Benelux and beyond. Yes. And this study is also about the uh, how much uh, the one, the researcher who is sitting on the shotgun bench can bear uh, huge speeds because the driver is driving like a sports car driver uh, and uh, the co-anthropologist is, is somewhat, somewhat scared.
and let's see what comes next. Bow fort. Okay, we have come some kind of fortress here. And now we come to Echternacht soon. Grundhof. So there is Germany on the other side. Jawohl. And the river. There. Those people with those caravans and stuff. They're Germans, probably. Or maybe not. Ahead of us we see the truck that is carrying apparently what is seems to be a Nazi gold treasure. Yes. This is what we have concluded. Yes. And this conclusion is based on the evidence that this truck <coughs> is very slow, so it seems that it's carrying something very heavy. And valuable. Valuable also, because the driver has to slow down in and certain slower. places. And now he apparently noticed that we were tracking him down. The Nazi gold hunters. Maybe all Germans are just caravaners. Maybe not. Or they might be so German soldiers and their descendants who were left behind the enemy lines when the Second World War was coming to its end. So they are now living here as Sudet Germans. Ah, uh, yes, and maybe. They have based their own mafia. That's the conclusion we have come to. That sounds quite reasonable. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Another uh, interpretation of this would be that it's a refugee camp. So yes, for the floods. Yeah. Yes. And see, look at there. There is a German town. Very uh, nice. Very nice. Such so orderly town. Yes. And no border guards or fences or anything. This is yeah, the new Europe. German Panzers can come whenever they want. Yes, yes. Of course. <laughs> now there is a bridge. And that I would call a bridge. It's uh, pretty high. And I'm getting dizzy already from even only looking at it. I would say it's a remarkable work of the peasants of Luxembourg. Yes, maybe. Germany. Yeah. Is it? It's impossible how such a primitive culture could have have constructed something like this. But as an anthropologist, we cannot be too judgmental. Too judgmental, and we must overcome our prejudices. Yes. Look at it. I'll have to like. It's amazing. It's crazy. It's a monument. Now we are raising up to this monumental bridge. Some would even say we are climbing up. We are climbing up. And our spirits rise up. up. Yes, because we are getting closer to the sacred. Marxist destination. Yes, also. It's huge, Conan. Now we are approaching the bridge, and we are on it. This bridge will lead us to the Germany, and to uh, Trier. Look at those views, it's really nice. Nice. Okay, it's just, well, it's okay. Yeah. Basically, like... Whatever. Nyt ollaan Trieris. Okei, okay, 100 metri. Tästä vasemmalle ois pitänyt kääntyä. Sori. On 
got apart the hotel and our twin beds and uh, exhausted anthropologist is already on working doing important analysis. Yes. Unfortunately the Facebook is not working as it should. Trier is most famous of the Porta Nigra that was built by the glorious Roman Empire. The Romans were definitely not peasants because they built something so remarkable like this. Also we can see the great Deutschland in this other architecture. Probably the most famous person to come from Trier is of course Karl Marx and his Excellent analysis how capillaries will work has changed our lives also. The Marxist nihilism that we follow constantly and very ironically. In the natural habitat, German service folk produces apparently good food and wine. Today we are leaving. <laughs> Three and as you can see, anthropologists are masters of every kind of tool they can they have their hands on. Luckily for us, the green now turns again, so we are leaving, saying goodbye to Trier. Spring is already here, in full greenness. Autobahn. Nice. Kapalas to Luxembourg. Landscape of Luxembourg, Grand Duchy, Capital. This 
Das ist Franz. Country Soil of the Franz. Arriving to Theophil. Industrial nature of the transportation in France caused us to lift our noses in disgust. As we drive through the France countryside, we can find that this is exactly what we expected. Yes. Is it okay if now I tell my theory of the the, the uh, scenarios in these countries? We have uh, different uh, countries that we have uh, faced uh, so far. Yeah. Yes. That's it. Good. Yeah. Yes. As, and as my colleague just said, uh, France looks exactly like France, but uh, uh, Netherlands it reminds totally of Estonia, uh, Belgium, and uh, Luxembourg. Uh, they're like Finland. Uh, if you look at the plant life, forests, and uh, everything else, uh, for the one exception in Luxembourg, the you know the uh, ravines or what what they are called uh, are much steeper and higher than in Finland. Okay, that was it. That was it. Yeah. That was a little bit disappointing, but I thought that. These countries would be much more developed, but we have to take what we can. Yes. And not all can be so efficient, Finnish people. Yes. But this alleyway of trees, oh, what a wonderful idea! It is uh, quite romantic, but the romantic feelings they are uh, primitive and. Uh, they are something that people should get rid of. This no, not enough development. Here. Yes, and especially if there is a smell of peasants. Yes, that is very disgraceful. The France Air Force has noticed our presence and they are now harassing us and our scientific work here in France. And we, uh, we are really intimidated. To the, uh, they probably will be destroying us in very these close minutes. No, now they left away. Uh, but we are arriving at Verdun and uh, just when we are arri arriving uh, the, the airplanes are now harassing us. Yes. This is really, really dangerous uh, ethnographic field trip. Maybe never in the history of uh, anthropology has a uh, French Air Force tried to intimidate the anthropologists and away. destroy the science altogether. Marche de Verdun, battleground in the First World War, witnessed one of the most devastating scenes of war, cruelty and humanity in the war. With 700,000 killed and several villages forever demolished, the grounds of Verdun have been preserved and sacralized, commemorating the dead and the devastation. Fleur de Vrand de Mont, the village de Truy, and 1916 destroyed village by the Germans and probably also French troops. And probably there are some bodies in the ground. Fort de Dormont, 
pride of French military fortresses. Behind the dark side of humanity, noble anthropologists drove to Champagne region to drown their sorrows with Champagne, showing and commemorating their nobility and elitism, as well as snobbery. Winehouse and Poutine offered fine Champagne approved by the Church. Now we have arrived at the Champagne region and we have the Vaude Manje region. And here we see the wine, fields of wine. The Champagne region is evidently more cultivated and civilized part of these lowlands since it was found out that the Boti Fine House representative had visited Finland. These novel views ooze the centuries old preparation that the natives had undergone in order to welcome the hero anthropologist and have their approval. The hero anthropologist resided in the city of Rams for one night, observing the daily life of native Ramsians. It is a beautiful morning in Rams. The sun is shining, and the people are enjoying their lives. We can see here, hopefully, the natives in their natural habitats living their daily life somewhere in these buildings. There are birds flying. Life is going on on the Rheims. Has been stripped away of its former glory, but it still oozes the centuries old cultivation that has been present here with all the kings crowned and all the nobles being beheaded, or, or I mean, uh, nobles being uh, sacrificed.
young dog is sacralized and adored here in Rams, showing the female adoration of the French peasants. We arrive at Belgium once again. The little bay de Palais is this cafe on and this food we are driving. As we see, there are lots of trees, green trees, and it is very nice nature. Yes, this reminds me very much of the proper Finland. The vegetation is very similar, except for some these. Uh, like somewhat like a ruiz salon yes yes there are some differences but they are not that big ah now we are arriving at Kuvan and we should be starting to pay attention for our scenery route Road. let's yes. let's see The fears of Waterloo have been witnessed on many occasions, but most notably to Napoleon, who was here non-victorious, but he was stopped by the English troops who, after the battle, went for the tea in that cafe. Antwerpen Initiation right for this young Belgian man. Probably every Belgian man has to wear some this kind of teletopic costume. For example, I am not a good person. I am not a I am not a video person. I am Koko <laughs> Okay, now we're arriving at Rotterdam. It comes from uh, 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 the old old Germanic language that mean, means rotten and damned. And as you can see, rotten and damaged. Damaged also. It has multiple meanings, but it is really a big city, and you can see those skyscrapers and all the stuff and. Well, they went already behind the horizon, but uh, this is uh, not necessarily an uh, indication of that it is a developed city. It is developed uh, in material way and technologically perhaps because of the 
constant flow of goods through the uh, harbor to Europe. It's very much working class development. Yes, yes. So, but that doesn't mean that the uh, cultivation of the people would be as high as, uh, for example, ours. So, but at least it doesn't smell like peasants in here. Expedition, the hero and anthropologist also participated in the conference of the European Association for the Study of Religion. Such a delight was, was it to participate in discussion and scientific debates with fellow anthropologists, scientists of religion, and overlook the peasants in the Honingen, Netherlands. Here we can see fellow colleagues of our heroes participating in the conference. The Netherlandian natives enjoy their natural habitat, the waterways. The sacred and the secular are living side by side in Groningen, inviting the hero anthropologist in delightful evenings. In Amsterdam, this noble peasant drives his boat alongside with fellow natives in the natural habitat in the big city that is Amsterdam. This playful surrounding drew also the hero anthropologist in this city and its rhythm. In Amsterdam, the sacred and the profane are living side by side, like this church and the red light district, just around the corner. As the hero anthropologist said farewell to Amsterdam and Benelux and beyond, they observed the natives in their natural habitat going on their daily lives to work, to home, to work, to home, to work, to home, to work, to home, to home.